something had happened to my recording uh, and it'll just kind of start abruptly in just a second but we're gonna set up the widget together so we'll set it up to where we can customize the price on screen and then do everything with the widget instead of specifically the guy um, it's gonna start kind of abruptly I guess it didn't catch the first few seconds of the actual recording I did but you're not missing anything it'll just uh, just be in your innkeeper folder where you have your innkeeper guy so yeah all right let's get started together so I'm gonna right click in the same shopkeeper folder where we have him at user interface I'm gonna create a widget user widget uh, in keeper under nope not BP UI or underscore W I go back and forth I don't know why so I'm gonna open that up wait for it to load there it goes alright so I am going to first look for a canvas panel and attach it then I'm gonna right click and wrap that with a scale box and a size box just so that no matter what machine it's on same size same scaling with the right oh not 91 19 20 and 1080 compile that and then we can design however we want to so I'm just going to let's see I'm gonna add another canvas panel anchor it to the bottom alignment 0.5 on the X and 1 on the Y and then reset the positioning size X um, 450 and 300 on the Y that'd be fine position on the Y I'll say negative 250 basically wherever you want it to appear on the screen when you interact with the guy or girl whatever I'm gonna add an image to it anchor it to the full mini canvas panel just like that color and opacity black 0.5 on the alpha I'm gonna add a text block that is anchored to the center 0.5 on the X reset its positionings and justification in the middle then we can kind of position it where we want to and we will make this one say it is now it costs all it's gonna say is it costs and I'm gonna end, end it with the space nah, I don't need the space I'm gonna change it up to be italic and 24 is fine then I'm gonna duplicate this one and drop it into place where we want it and this is just gonna be the price so I'm gonna make this to be a little bit bigger of course you can design it how you want to this is just how I'm doing it just to show you how we'll be able to determine price I'm gonna change this to be a little bit different color it cost blah 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 so this one's going to be the actual cost text so make sure that that one is a variable nothing else needs to be a variable like this image or anything so we'll, nope 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 not that one we'll duplicate this one one more time and then drop it into place below that would, would you like to stay the night? We'll auto wrap that text and then scale it where we want it. Oh, not you. So that's looking decent. And then we can add two buttons to the bottom. Well, one button, and then we'll customize it. <clears throat> so this one I'll drop a text block onto it that says yes 
customize the button size, so it'd be 75 by 100. Let's set up its style real quick. So normal, hovered, and pressed. I'm going to make sure the normal is just, whoa, that's too bright. I'm going to set the value to point three, the hovered to point one, because I like it to be darker when it's hovered, and then point three back on the pressed, so that when you click it, it does a little flash to let you know. You can set it to what you want. If you've got pictures, you just drop them in right here. But that's what I'm going to do. Let's see, italic on that, and then I'll just duplicate this button. Should have actually anchored it, but it'll be fine. So position Y is 208. I just want to make sure that they line up like that. And for this one is no. And it's looking decent enough. So now over in the graph, get rid of pre-construct and tick. We'll add a variable called cost, which will be an integer that is instance editable and expose on spawn. And then we'll grab out our cost text, set text, and we'll grab out that cost value and plug it in like that. So we'll compile that. Now let's open up the innkeeper guy. So on event interact, instead of doing all this, we will basically move this over into the widget in just a second. But first we need to create this widget. So on event interact inside the innkeeper, Let's create widgets. And the widget will be our innkeeper UI. The cost will plug in the cost right here. And then we will just add to viewport. And let's just do a double check real quick. So right now it's 75. So when I talk to him, it should pop up and say cost is 75. Yeah. So right after we create it, let's right click that blue and promote it to a variable called in widget ref or whatever you want to call it. We'll plug that in. You can disconnect from the target. I just like I don't like having a line go underneath it. It's the same thing, it doesn't really matter. But I just like doing it like this. You can alt and left click in order to disconnect. So we will need one more boolean called, uh, yeah, just say menu open with a B at the front because I always forget that B. We'll add a branch at the beginning. Is the menu open? If it's not, then we're going to be doing something. So we want to check to see first if we have this already created. We don't want to recreate it if we do. So we'll right click that reference and do a convert to validated get. That is basically like getting a reference and then doing this is valid node. It's just all consolidated into one thingy. So if it is valid then we just want to add the reference to the viewport but if it's not then we create it. All right, and then after we uh, add it to the viewport, we'll set that our menu is open. So if the menu is open, this will be valid, and we can just say remove from parent. Just like that. We will set menu open back to false. So let's test that real quick, make sure that it's working. All righty. 
So now what we can do is at the end we want to show our mouse cursor. So we will get the player controller and we'll set show mouse cursor and set input mode game and UI. Oh, set input mode game and UI. Just like that. And then the widget reference will be the widget to focus. So up here, let's get the player controller again, because when we are closing the menu, we want to set show mouse cursor back to hidden. And set input mode back to game only. Oh, don't need this anymore. So we can actually hmm, inside the innkeeper UI, let's add a reference to this widget. So or to this uh innkeeper. So in keeper and it will be an in keeper object reference that is also instance editable exposed on spawn that way when they're in the middle of their fading in and fading out we can set this in use to true and then false so we'll back this event interact up a little bit and drop it in right there So we can basically take all of this into, so I'm going to copy and paste it in our innkeeper UI, but I want it to be applied to our yes button. So which one is that? Button zero. I'll just call it yes up here real quick. Yes. All right. On clicked, then we will just paste that in. So since it was communicating through the interface, it's already getting the player. It already has a cost variable set up. If you've changed its name in here, you want to make sure that this one is what's fed into the amount to check. And this is the interact blueprint interface again. It's already doing our recover. The only thing we do need to do is grab our innkeeper. And then we can replace all this with set in use add the delay right here for how long you want I'm just gonna set it back to 10 seconds and then set in use one other thing we will want to do is right here at the beginning when we click yes we want to take this widget off screen so we will remove from parent the self that way it just takes this d widget off screen and well let's back this up because when we do that we'll get player controller and do the same thing set input mode game only and set show mouse cursor to false Just for tidiness sake, I'm going to take this over here, create a little custom event called clear screen, and then plug that just like that. Because since we're going to do a no button that does the same thing, we may as well just create it on a function and then just call that. So I'll just call that clear screen function right here, and then just like that. So now for our other button, we'll do an on clicked event, and then we can just call that clear screen function, and it'll do the same thing. Oh, and uh, if we do it this way, one thing we did over here is we had a menu open variable to determine which we do when we interact. 
So when we're doing that here, we'll just grab our innkeeper real quick and set menu open back to false. That way when we interact with them again, we don't have to click it twice to toggle it and then come back on. So let's check this real quick. So I can click it multiple times. It's not showing my mouse cursor. I must have missed something. Ah, I forgot to click that little check. All right, let's check this now. There's my mouse. All right, so if I click no, it goes back to normal. Hmm. Access none trying to read property innkeeper. Ah. Okay, so over here, when we create the actual innkeeper widget, I forgot to hook up. We need a reference to the actual innkeeper. So now when we click no, it removes it from parent. Yeah. All right, the 10 second delay. <laughs> I was like, I thought it broke or something. So if I click yes, it doesn't do the rest thing, but it does take me back to normal. So what we can do is if you have something that pops up, you can have another widget or something that pops up that says you don't have enough money. So, we'll I'll just do that together real quick. Canvas panel. Actually, you know what? We can just duplicate this one. So, duplicate. Delete what we don't need. Resize it down. Not that. Resize the canvas panel. Recenter its anchor. Change it to say not enough gold. Resize it down a little bit again. So, this one for the visibility of this canvas panel, we are going to set it to hidden off the bat. And then if it comes back false, so instead of clearing the screen here, we'll do it right after this check comes back true. We'll clear the screen here. And then if false, we'll grab that. Oh, we got to make sure it is a variable. Call it what you want. I'm going to call it broke, my broke canvas panel. So I'm going to get that canvas panel set visibility set it that it is visible set a small delay I'm gonna say two seconds is it enough time for him to insult me and then clear screen so if I jump in Cost 75 gold. Yes, I would like to stay the night. Thank you kindly. Now I gotta wait for that little 10 second timer to... There it goes. Not enough gold. And then closes. So yeah, there we go. Alright, so now we got our little widget in place. And we can actually, you know what? We can delete this part right here from the innkeeper, no longer necessary. Save everything, and then we're all set up and in place to go over it in the next video. So I'll see y'all in a bit. Bye.